Hi everyone, thank you for watching and today I'm with Jacob Robinson known as Baby Jake currently 8 fights unbeaten, 2 knockouts, 2 devastating knockouts at that and Baby Jake is also the son of former WBO featherweight world champion Steve Robinson and today we're going to be having a chat about Jake's life, his career, what it's like training with his dad uh, and just quite a few things, I mean there should be something for everyone um, in this interview so um, so, Champ, thank you, by the way, for taking the time to uh, to have a chat with me, by the way. I appreciate that. Yeah, thanks a lot, man. I appreciate that, you know. So, you know. Good stuff, good stuff. But for your mate, he's obviously, obviously one of the things that, that I think is really cool is growing up with your dad, um, being world champion, um, and, you know, sort of growing up in that situation. Now, I know for you it's, it's sort of normal, um, mm -hmm. and I know that it's, it's something that you're sort of used to. But for somebody that has no idea about it, I mean, thinking back to, to sort of when you were younger or whatever, what, what was it like? I mean, do you have many memories of, of Steve's boxing career, of your dad's boxing career? Were you very involved, like when he was going to camps or, or you know, what was your whole experience like, basically? Yeah, like? yeah. so obviously, um, when I obviously won the World Tour, obviously I wasn't born. So, like, um, I, I was sort of, uh, towards the end of his career, I was sort of... Um, a little bit more aware of it. So obviously I think he had his last fight like 2001, 2002. So, um, but yeah, I just sort of uh, know, um, just remember vague memories of it. Um, watching like sort of old tapes of him when I was younger. And then just obviously people just obviously saying, oh yeah, your dad's a world champion. But I just never really, uh, I never really thought of it like that. Obviously he's always just, just like, a, you know, just my dad really. So but people would be like, oh, your dad used to be a world champion. But, you know, it's uh, it's uh, more like the more I grow up now, it's obviously um, I'm more like you know, um, like appreciating him a bit more, you know, and, and understanding a bit more, you know. So which is uh, which is good, you know. So yeah. cool, okay. Uh, well, well, yeah. well, you achieved, you know. So fantastic. Yeah, it's it's good because it's it's a good insight for people because obviously you know what it's like, but like I don't know what it's like other people. I yeah, mean, it's yeah. it's an amazing thing, mm. and, uh, and and that is. I'd like to talk about obviously your your beginnings in boxing because um, yeah. you know in terms of your initial sort of um, like in the very beginning like your inspiration. I mean, was it your dad that actually inspired you to get into boxing, or, or was it something else? Or like, I mean, where did it first first start um, with that? Basically? Yeah, yeah, it was um, yeah, it's a weird one really because um, I went I went like to the gym when I was like about seven eight. I used to just just uh, go with um, my dad and my brother, but. Um, yeah, at first I didn't really want to box, to be honest. But then, um, yeah, like I said, I went to the gym about seven, eight, and then um, I had my first fight at fourteen. Then, so um, my first proper amateur fight, and then um, just yeah, just went from there really. But I didn't really want to box, to be honest. To be honest, but my dad never really pushed me into it. Just used to just bring me to the gym. So obviously, I was I was quite an active kid. I was always running around. I was causing trouble a little bit. But um, but yeah, man, just uh, just from there. Then and then ever since, just uh, never really looked back. Right. Okay. That's cool. That's, that's a good insight into it because obviously, because mm. people have different ideas about it. I mean, yeah. some people probably think, like you know, some people might think he pushed you into it or whatever. Some yeah, people might yeah. Think that's it's good to sort of hear your own words, you know. Mm. Now another thing is, um, even though I'm moving around in time a little bit here, coming up more to the the present day, obviously, um, some of your your knockouts have been you know, very brutal and, and very amazing. You've really got that mm. power. And, you know, yeah. more than that, you've sort of got that one punch um, sort of ability as well. Mm. And obviously, one of the things that interests me about that is, I mean, basically, where, where do you think that comes from? Uh, I mean, is it a particular type of training? Is it is it more sort of natural strength? Um, um, I, I, I know your dad's big on, obviously, some of his, his body weight stuff and certain types of training. Mm. So maybe it comes from there. But anyway, over to you. Anyway, where does that come from? Yeah, um, I think I think a lot of it can, can be sort of uh, uh, natural, but um, we do a lot of um, explosive training. So like, um, so like um, we do a lot of stuff with my SNC coach, which is a lot of um, explosive work. So it's like a lot of sprints, a lot of high box jumps. Um, so with the weights, uh, we do a bit of weights, but nothing um, too heavy. But like I said, everything more all explosive, to be honest. So um, we do like um, a trap bar, um, deadlifts, or a jump. Uh, stuff like that, to be honest, which is which is all explosive. So I think it does help, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Again, I mean, you know, it, it's one of those things where it's a talent you don't always see. I mean, uh, mm. in terms of um, obviously a lot of people sort of wear wear their opponents down or whatever. Whereas mm. you, it's bang, and it's you know, yeah, yeah. And obviously, I've been been ringside for a couple as well, and we'll get to a few of those later on. But um, 
one of the things I would like to say is obviously it's still sort of, you know, early days in, in your career. I mean, it's uh, yeah. to a certain extent and everything like that. And you develop in every fight, which is, which is wonderful to see. Do yeah. you have a, like a, so far, like a proudest moment um, of your career so far? That's something that really stands out. It's like, wow, you know, that was a good fighter. Is there anything or maybe, because I know we haven't seen the best of you yet. I know yeah, that yeah. by a long way. Mm. But uh, so far out of, the, out of the eight fights, or maybe something from your amateur career, it could be from there. Is there something yeah. that, that stands out as like the proudest moment for you? Um, yeah, and, um, obviously, I think, I think when I boxed up in, um, up, up in London was a nice one. When I boxed in um, York Hall on that um, golden contract um, or undercard, but that was, um, that was, I, um, I enjoyed that, you know. And yeah. um, I, I'd say at the moment, I'd say in my pro career, that was probably like my proudest, yeah, I'd say. And uh, obviously being part of that, um, of that uh, golden contract, you know, so, yeah. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah, it's fantastic. Um, it's yeah. funny enough. I remember. Funny enough, I remember that fight because I remember mm. I was actually working. Um, I can't even remember. I was somewhere in England, but I was on the way back, and I was mm. constantly checking, like, "Oh, how's he doing? How's he doing?" Yeah, yeah. But, you know, cause, but yeah, it was good. And obviously, he's a good, very good opponent to beat because obviously a former English yeah. champion. Uh, and right, I, believe, yeah. I believe he had the um, WBC international yeah. as well. That's right. So, yeah, right, I was, yeah. Supposed, yeah. I was yeah. supposed to fight. Sorry. Yeah, I was supposed to fight uh, Razak Najib at first. But obviously, he, um, a day before the um, uh, the opponent pulled out from the contract, so obviously he he, he stepped in because obviously he was um, he was like um, you know obviously um, a reserve for it, Jamie. You know I mean? So um, but yeah, he stepped in then, and obviously a, a box star Sean Davis, and um, but yeah, obviously like I said, being part of uh, that golden contract and uh, fight, fighting on Sky as well was um, was a good uh, was a nice uh, was a nice feeling, you know. So. Oh, good, good, good. All right. Well, I seem to be on the subject of, of certain fights. Um, I'm going to get into that because um, I, I had in mind to ask later to ask you. Now, there's a couple of other um, really good wins. Um, I mean, they're all good wins, you know, but there's a couple of others I want to ask you about specifically. And obviously, mm -hmm. one of those um, um, those fights is uh, is your knockout of Jules Phillips. Now, I know that he's obviously, he's obviously a journeyman. I, I believe he's retired now. Yeah, but, yeah he's retired, yeah. He retired, yeah, but you know, uh, it's good, you know, still good quality opposition, good experience. Yeah, yeah. Your knockout of, of him was, was absolutely devastating. I mean, I remember mm -hmm. being ringside, and to be honest, uh, even I was a bit shocked. I was a like, you know, bloody hell. And you know, but obviously, you know, everyone wants to see um, a knockout in boxing, but obviously, mm -hmm. you also don't want to see people getting badly hurt or anything. Yeah, yeah. And course. obviously, he was taken away with oxygen on and this, that, and the other, and all that type of thing. Mm -hmm. When you knocked him out, I mean, what went through your mind? Um, you know, in in that sort of situation, if that makes sense, what was your experience? Um, well, um, I was, I knew he was he was here because obviously he went uh, face face down really. So um, yeah, you just got to be as um, you know, as uh, cool cool really about it. To be honest, you can't really uh, celebrate. To be honest, because you see you see certain fighters they they knock um, their opponents out and uh, you know and they they're too excited. You know, they got the adrenaline's going going too much. You know, and um, yeah, you just got to be uh, cool cool and calm really about it. To be honest, you can't. Uh, you can't really celebrate, you know. That's yeah. what my um, that's what my dad said before. You know, you gotta be respectful for your for your opponent. So yeah. fair enough. It's just interesting because you know a lot of people will focus on the um, on the technical side of it of because obviously you know it was, it was a great fight. But I was just curious yeah. about um, you know what goes through a fighter's mind when when something like that happens, and and that's a good little insight into it. I mean, were you sort of obviously you were proud to win, and that goes without saying. Yeah, yeah. Were you worried for his health or anything? anything yeah. Like yeah, that's 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 why even like today now, I, when I talk about it, obviously it's uh, it was I, I was I was generally worried to be honest. Obviously, when he got um when he got uh, taken away as well with the oxygen and as well, because I see I even seen him being sick as well, you know. So I was a bit like you know, I was a bit worried to be honest. So uh, like you know and everything. So yeah. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, again, it's a good insight because obviously it is it is a it is a tough old um, sport, but it's a beautiful sport. For sure. Yeah. But, um, you know, and, that, and that's a little insight for people. Now, another one of the, the wins that, um, that I thought was a special win was obviously a win over um, Johnny Phillips, who's obviously you know, yeah, yeah. a very talented fighter. And I mentioned yeah. that one. Um, I wasn't sure if to mention that one, but I mentioned that one because obviously he had, yeah. had a good fight on the weekend. Um, yeah, yeah, of course. Plus to Hopi Price. And one yeah. of the things I like about your fight with Johnny Phillips is it showed some of your technical ability. Now, I know that mm. obviously I've sort of focused on some of the power and everything, but obviously... Mm. You're not limited to just power. I know that. No. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, like I say, I mean, even though it, it uh, that fight was um, 
not not held back, but do you know what I mean? It was more technical. There was more. Yeah, it was. Some good football. Yeah, yeah. Like, some good uh, mm. distance. You could see some, you know, yeah, some yeah. boxing ability. So, mm. um, yeah, I mean, again, I mean, your, your experience of that fight, I, I don't really have one question about it as such. I'm just curious about, you know, what you thought of your of your performance um, yeah. in the fight overall, really. Yeah, to to be honest, um, that fight didn't really go as um, as expected because I thought I thought um, Johnny was going to come up come at me a little bit more. To be honest, the way he was talking like, before the fight and that. Uh, but um, when we got in there, it was really like like a chess match. And um, he even he even said after the fight, you know, I was I was worried, uh, I was quite weary of your power. And uh, and um, yeah, he, he even surprised me as well how how he even boxed. So. Um, in uh, in that sense, but like I said, the fight didn't go as as I expected. But I I can I can box a few different styles to be honest, and um, a few like a lot of people think that I'm just strong and fit, and I can just punch out. But I can actually box. I'm you know I'm a southpaw, um, awkward, a very awkward southpaw can hit hard. So um, yeah, like um, it didn't go as I expected, but it was a good it was a good six round good good six rounder as uh, Johnny was coming off uh, two good uh, performances before that. I think he was like five and one. Yeah. And it was only my fifth uh, fifth pro fight, uh, co main event to uh, Riddy's fight, and um, I sold quite a lot of tickets too for that for that fight too. I remember, so um, it was it was it was a little bit of a little bit of pressure. I felt a little bit of pressure before the fight because obviously it was sort of back and forth on social media with me and him, and uh, and stuff. But um, but yeah, you know, obviously uh, it's good. It's a good experience looking back at it now. You know, so oh, good stuff. Okay. Oh, something else interesting there, chap, that, that I um, that you sort of touched on, I'd like to go back to. Because you know something, one of the things that, that really always interests me is, is like the mental um, side of fighting. Because, you know, mm. people talk about the physical a lot. And in a minute now, I'd like to get to more of your training and things. But but before we get there, in terms of um, like your mindset for, for fighting, you know, um, obviously not being a boxer myself, but knowing plenty of them, and obviously for people watching this, a lot of people watching this will yeah. be in the game, so they'll know. But some of them won't, you know, whatever. But yeah. you know, when you get a fight booked, I mean, what goes through your through your mind, sort of on the run up, um, you know, through camp, but particularly, you know, as you get close to the fight, as you get into fight week, you know, fight day, you know, right on the run up to it. Basically, in a, in that situation, what are you what are you thinking most of the time? How does it go for you? Yeah, it is. Um, I think I think sort of when when your fights booked your dates, I think you uh, you think of it for the first few days. It sort of runs in your head, but obviously you just gotta um, focus on your training. So you think like, oh, in six six or eight weeks' time, that's that's my fight date. It's sort of running through your head for the first couple of days, but then you get you know once you get your training, get your training in, and now you sort of not switch off on the date, but then um, you sort of always thinking of that date. But then, like, it's, um, yeah, it's, it's like a weird one. It's a strange one, really. But then, like, obviously, closer it gets, and that's obviously, that's the day you've been thinking of for, like, what, six or eight weeks or whatever. So it's, um, but, um, but yeah, like, um, long, long, long as you're doing your training and everything else, then you haven't got no, no doubts, really, you know. That's yeah. it, you know, so. Fair enough. It makes sense. It does make sense. And, and, I, and I have yeah. heard that as long as you, you know, as long as you put the work in, mm. um, you know, then, then obviously there's not a lot to worry about. Mm. But yeah, and, and you mentioned, obviously you mentioned pressure and things like that. I mean, do, do you ever feel any of that side of things like on a fight day, any nerves, any, or are you just, are you just quite calm and quite sort of excited about it? Or what's the main sort of emotions? Yeah, there's some, um, yeah, yeah, butterflies in it. So obviously it's like excitement and, and nerves at the same time. So it's, um, but um, but yeah, the, um, I'd say I'd say it's more like um, yeah, I'd say more excitement to be honest, really. Yeah. But obviously, you know, you gotta have those nerves, you know, to keep you uh, to keep you on edge, keep you sharp, you know. But sure. um, but yeah, man, it's more um, yeah. More excitement, yeah. Yeah, it's good. It's a good insight because obviously people don't mm. know for just from watching the fight, you know, what someone's thinking, what someone's feeling. Yeah, yeah. Type of thing. And I, I was just interested in it because I, I I've asked a lot of people. I was speaking to. Um, Tony Borg recently, and, and he sort of yeah. talking about nerves, and he was saying it's to have a little bit of it. It's a good thing because obviously, as yeah, you say, yeah, of course, keep you sharp. And keep I agree, hundred percent, hundred and ten percent. So another thing is obviously, um, obviously, physical training. I mean, we, you know, we touched on that like a little bit earlier on with weights and a few mm. things that you mentioned. But I mean, obviously, it's sort of a regular um, sort of day for you, I suppose, like day to day. Uh, obviously, I've been in the gym myself. I've seen a little bit of it. But like, what's what's your sort of day to day um, routine in terms of in terms of the types of training you do, and um, just a little overview of that would would be good. I think. Yeah, 
Yeah, so what with with the lockdown or with with that with that um, lockdown? Well, funny enough, I had them as two. I had them as two separate questions, but it's cool yeah, if yeah. you want to come. It's cool if you want to combine them, to be honest, because yeah, yeah, obviously it's going to be different in the lockdown. Um, I mean that's one thing, and then you know different to your regular training. So yeah, let's talk a little bit about both about how you would train normally, and then yeah, what changes the um the lockdown has sort of created. You know, let's let's talk a little bit about that. You know, yeah. So um, when when it was uh, back when it was 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 normal, so it'd be um, either like my morning run in the morning. So either that that would obviously be uh, my sprints or um or my distance run. So say about uh, five six miles it'd be in the morning, and then either um either late morning would be a gym work. It all depending if it was uh, my sparring day or or um, anything like that, and um, also my track work I'd also have. So um, so say if it was my, my sparring day, like on a Tuesday, I'd spar in the morning, say up St. Joe's, and then um, it'd be like my track work then in the uh, in the evening, you know. And then um, usually uh, usually Fridays then, it'd be like my S&C, my s and um, session then with my S&C coach. Which is um, which is uh, Jake Williams. He's a good uh, good S and C coach. You know, he's just uh, qualified in uni, and uh, he's um, he's pretty good. You know, so um, but yeah, man, just um, on a day to day, just it, it it would vary to be honest, or depending like with my sparring and stuff, and um, and obviously my track work and and my and my distance running. So so yeah, okay, brilliant. And then obviously, um, you know, we, we've touched on it a little bit with some of the, obviously some of the lockdown changes and things like that. But obviously, I am curious about that because to go into that a, a little bit more sort of um, in depth, because obviously different people are adapting to it different ways. So even yeah. things like, you know, training outside being more popular and, mm. uh, and obviously you'll know this with the personal training, which, which we'll also talk about soon. But um, yeah, I mean, in terms of some some of the biggest changes, has it made um, training more difficult for you in in many ways? I mean, has it been like again? I, I don't really have with this. I don't really have one question to to sort of narrow it into. Mm. I'm just curious on on what your thoughts are of you know of training in lockdown as as a whole, really. If if that makes yeah. sense, you know. Yeah, um, I don't I don't think it's been that difficult to be honest, because obviously um, there's no excuse really for for training because you've got to make a. Um, you know, a, a bad situation into a positive. So, um, with the, with the training side, um, I'm pretty I'm pretty lucky. Obviously, my my dad's my trainer, and um, you know, obviously, um, for for pad work, I'm doing my pad work literally five days a week, um, with him. Um, I got a few uh, few weights out out his back, you know, and stuff, and uh, you know, and this um, you know, and obviously the running. So obviously, you just uh, you you know, it's no excuse. Obviously, the track isn't open, so I've been doing like my my sprints over a local park and stuff. And um, yeah, so I I've been training like about at least about five days a week. So and some of them days is twice a day. But obviously, with the spar and obviously I haven't sparred. So I think um, I think either the end of this week, I think or beginning of next week, I start my sparring back up now. So, but other than that, I've been I've been training, you know. Been training basically like um, every other day, to be honest. So, brilliant, brilliant. Well, you know what, champ? I mean, you are right. It, it, it is no excuse, and and I've seen so many guys sort of adapt and you yeah. know um, find different ways of doing things, and a lot of them carry on. But it's you know it's a good insight because it, I think yeah. it all comes down to motivation, really. You know, it does. It does. Of, you know, so yeah. Now, obviously, um, something else to to sort of touch on there is is obviously um, training with your dad, training with Steve. Um, now, obviously, that's you know key part of your training and everything like that. Obviously, he's got like a wealth of experience to to sort of pass on from everything he's done. Yeah. But you know, in terms of training with him day to day and things like that, I mean, what is the experience like? And I'm what the reason I ask that is obviously um, it's amazing to be training with a world champion. Obviously, yeah, yeah, you know, um, former world champion being your, your dad. But what's it like training with your father? I mean, does it add a different dynamic? Um, I mean, well, you know, again, it's it's not really one question as such, but yeah. what, what's the the experience of that side of the things, like for you. Yeah, the, um, I just don't know any other way to be honest. Obviously, because I've always, I've always, he's always been my trainer, and you know, and and uh, just just like any other trainer. So it's like he's a trainer when we train, and then he's my dad when we stop training. It so um, that's that's just how that's just how it is, really. You know, and uh, I don't know ever, ever wait really. So yeah, it's um, you know we uh, we sometimes have a little bicker sometimes about certain things, but. Like I said, I can't really argue too much because obviously, look, look what he's done. So, you know, 
sometimes I I act like I'll bite my tongue sometimes and think like oh you know he he's been a world champion so I can uh, I can um I can't follow it you know too much you know so well it's worked so far so you know you know obviously I'm I'm eight eight and zero you know for a reason because of him you know so that's it you know. Lovely, yeah. Yeah, again, it's a good insight because, I mean, it's, it's one of those things, but I've always thought it's a really cool dynamic of mm. um, how he supports you, but to some extent, how you support each other as well. Of course. Um, because obviously there's, there's a mutual, but yeah, and, and even the little things, I mean, this isn't even a question, this is just a little bit off topic, but mm. even when, uh, like, when I've been ringside and stuff and I've seen him sort of encouraging you and even even on your yeah. day, when I remember, uh, I remember, you know, him giving you some encouraging words and things and, it, and you were doing well anyway, but it's just, it's just a lovely... Mm. A really cool dynamic, I think, with that. And of course. His experience, he can pass on to you. So, good stuff. Now, another one, um, and, and there's not lots and lots to go, but um, I'd like to touch on, obviously, you know, you fought around a few different places and, and things mm. in so far. I mean, is there a favourite place that you fought in terms of the crowd and things? Obviously, at the moment, there are no crowds, but looking mm. back, you know, um, is it... Do you find it best sort of fighting in Cardiff, you know, being a, a Cardiff boy, or it was um, was the York Hall one? Maybe that was the best. I'm talking about like when you're in in somewhere fighting the atmosphere, yeah. the crowd. You know, I mean, what, what's your personal favourite, basically? You know, yeah. Um, obviously, I, I I like to uh, to fight to fight at home, obviously, but um, obviously um, York Hall was um, was probably my favourite place to fight in. Obviously, because of what it was as well, being a golden contract, being on Sky Sports and everything, but. Um, but yeah, obviously, uh, fighting at home is is uh, is the best, really, because um, you know what? Um, I do I do sell a lot of tickets when um, when I do have the opponent, the opponent here, you know. So like for like the Johnny Phillips fight, I sold so quite a lot of tickets because of his because uh, of his name and that and stuff and uh, what he uh, sort of brought to the ring. But um, yeah, yeah, you can't be you can't beat uh, fighting at home, you know, with that uh, with that home home crowd and stuff, you know. So brilliant, yeah. Yeah, I was just curious because, you know, I, I speak to different fighters and, and obviously some guys say, like, you know, um, the crowd doesn't make a difference or this, that and the other. Some people mm. thrive off the crowd. I mean, some people yeah. have told me, you know, they thrive off really hostile crowds or whatever. So you, yeah, hear yeah. Different, you hear different things. But I was just, just curious, especially because there are no crowds at the moment. So obviously, of course. you know, for your next fight or whatever, there, there might not be... Um, actually, that, that is a good question in itself. I mean, obviously, if you, if you do sort of get in the position of um, fighting you know, in an arena with, with no crowd there. What do you mm. think? Um, I mean, obviously, it's just you and him in the ring. But, I mean, yeah. what, what are your thoughts on fighting with, with no crowds, like what's happening at the moment? Type um, to, to be honest, I think it'd be sort of, um, you know, like when you spar, to be honest, you know. So when you, when you spar in the gym, there's obviously not as obviously many people around. So I think that's how you sort of got to um, sort of... Um, that's how you gotta approach it. Obviously, it's a fight, obviously, but you gotta sort of approach it in that in that sense. So, um, but yeah, obviously, it would be a bit weird, obviously, because you know I've always sort of fought with crowds in the amateurs and obviously in the pros. But um, yeah, like I said, it'd be be no excuse again if I get like an, an opportunity to fight on any of the uh, the big shows um, or anything like that without no crowd. Then um, I'll, I'll take it with both hands, you know. So brilliant, yeah. Good stuff. Okay. Now, um, I'd like to get to in a minute now, I'd like to get to the, to the future plans and things like that, but because we, because obviously we've looked back a bit, but before that, I just want to touch on obviously the personal training because, um, you know, that's, that's obviously something that you do, you know, do one-on-one -on -one sessions and different things. Yeah. But for people watching this who, who don't know about that, because obviously some people will know about it and everything, but anyone mm -hmm. watching this who doesn't know, you know, what type of thing you do and things like that, um, could you sort of talk us through a little bit about uh, about your personal training, about what you know what it's like, and the one on ones, and, and just just a little overview of um, what you yeah. do, basically. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So um, most of my um, my my training is based from my pad work. So um, um, I do a lot of pad work with my uh, clients, um, and then obviously like body weight sort of stuff, circuits, stuff like that. And um, but yeah, um, I got uh, my my client base is uh, is grown a little bit now, which is good. And um, but yeah. Just uh, mo most of it is is my pad work really. So um, and then other stuff in between and that. But um, but yeah, which is uh, which is good. You know, my uh, my client base is uh, growing. Like I said, so um, but like I said, I've I've been doing um, I haven't been too busy for the lockdown, but um, I've still been training quite a lot of my clients, which is good. So yeah, fantastic. 
Good stuff, yeah. Like I say, I mean, it's one of those things that's obviously um, good to get out there for anyone that doesn't know about it, um, because yeah. obviously the wealth of experience that you've got, you know, it's, yeah, yeah. I just I just wanted to give that give that a mention, give that a little shout yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, honest. yeah. So, uh, yeah, all right, cool. So, obviously, moving on to sort of, obviously, into the future now a little bit. I mean, it's one of the things that's very exciting. Obviously, it's still a little bit up in the air, but, you know, boxing is coming back and um, things are getting going again. There have been some, some fantastic fights recently. Yeah. So, your future plans, I mean, obviously, you know, I know you haven't got a date at the moment, but what are you sort of aiming for? I mean, are you sort of motivated more by sort of, you know, Welsh level, British level, and I know our world title is always on the yeah, hold, yeah. on the horizon. In the, in the, but in in the, in the sort of immediate term, even up to like I don't know, like the next year or so, you know, mm. what what's sort of motivating you? I mean, what's what's the dream for you um, at the moment, basically? Yeah, um, I think I think they mentioned um, October, so um, it could possibly be October. I could be out next, but um, but yeah, I want, I want some sort of uh, title fight to be honest now. Um, I think it was. I was supposed to have a title fight in June, but obviously that that uh, that went out the window. Yeah. But um, but yeah, um, any sort of title to be honest, if it's if it's regional, um, some sort of like um like international sort of title, anything like that to be honest, really. So yeah. any sort of title, I'll um I'll, I'll I'll jump at it, really. Good stuff. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, obviously, you know, you you're hundred percent at the level and ready for that now. Um. Mm-hmm. Well, obviously above that level, but what I mean is, you know, it's the right time in your career to yeah, yeah. go for that first title. And uh, obviously, um, yeah, I was talk- obviously recently interviewed your dad and I was talking to him about the same thing. And, yeah. uh, and it'd be really good to see you know, getting that first belt, you know. Um, it's, for it's sure, man. You know? Yeah, exciting times. Now, obviously, um, in terms of the future, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to push that a little bit further along, um, just in terms to, you know, bigger, bigger dreams. I mean, in terms of like some of your... Um, uh, sort of ambitions in, in boxing further into the future in the next few years. I mean, again, you know, what what's the uh, what's the aim? What's what's the drive? Um, I mean, you know, and I know that people do say um, world titles, and that's definitely on the horizon. I mean, you know, your dad's done it; you could definitely do it as well. Mm. But yeah, I mean, in in your own words, Jake, I mean, um, you know, the the dreams that you have in boxing. Maybe it's a particular place you want to fight in the world. Maybe it's like. Mm. Madison Square Garden or something like that, maybe yeah, yeah. a certain title, a certain amount of money, whatever, a certain opponent even, you know, if you're targeting yeah, that yeah. fight, anything. Mm-hmm. I mean, just, like I say, in, in your own words, take it away. Yeah, um, yeah you obviously um, to win, like, you know, regional titles first and then just go up for the rankings, to be honest, you know. But um, that Brit- a British title that I've um, always, always uh, wants to, wanted to win a British title. So it's, it's something about that British title, you know, um, even seen it in in, uh, in in real life as well. It just uh, like years ago seeing it when I was a kid. You know, I was for that British title is a nice uh, nice belt. You know, so um, yeah, just uh, you know to like I said, win regional titles and then uh, hopefully one day win a British title and then like I said, go on from there really. Because when you when you look too far ahead, then you don't um, you know you, you can get a bit sidetracked. So you got to look um, at the short term. You know. Why you boss boss in front of you? So uh, which my dad always says. So um, which is uh, for me would be either regional tiles, and then you know from there really. So but like I said, the British tile. I, I always always want to uh, win a British tile. So so yeah. Fantastic. Okay. Good stuff. All right then, champ. Well, I've got I've got two more questions. All right, and then we and then we'll sort of um, sort of wrap it up because it's been it's been fantastic so far. And we've had a really yeah, really Mike. good insight into your career. Um, I mean, one of the questions is obviously, and it's, it's, it, both of these are a little bit more deep, but let, let's get, you know, in terms of sort of staying hungry and in terms of sort of, um, you know, staying motivated and things, different guys have different motivations um, to fight. Sure. Obviously, some, yeah. some guys is, you know, more money orientated, some guys is more respect orientated, mm. sometimes it's like for their families. I mean, obviously, you know this because you, you, you yeah, know what I'm So for you personally, I mean, you know, when you get up in the morning to run and when you get up, you know, obviously there's titles, but there's, there's got to be something really, do you know what I mean, in your heart, obviously to, to do what, what you do boxing is, is yeah. to in the world. So obviously, yeah. you know, yeah, I mean, again, in your own words, what's the, what's the sort of, if you had to define the core of what drives you, yeah, and take it away, champ. What would yeah, you say? Yeah, yeah, um, I'd say uh, these days now is uh, my, my son Noah, to be honest now. Which gives me uh, gives me that drive to be honest now. In um, yeah, before it was more um, 
I'd say like the drive before he he was born, it was just um, I think because it was just sort of just like built built into really. So when you when you sort of um, when you've done it from a young age, you just that it's just like a nine to five off office job. So uh, but but these days I'd say it's more um, for my boy now, no. So uh, I really want to um, you know win titles and uh, and uh, and and um, and just climb up the ladder, you know, for for him, you know. So that's it. Oh, that's lovely. Yeah, family, family motivation. Sure, um, to be honest, um, again, this is a little bit off topic, but that's always um, one of my personal favourites when, when you see guys, you know, fighting to provide for their family. Um, yeah. I mean, you know, it, 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 I think that's a, that's a lovely uh, motivation. So good stuff. All right, then. OK, so it's, like I said, there's a couple more things. I mean, one of them is obviously I wanted to talk about um, the impact you've had on, on your community. And what, what I mean by that is obviously when you're a boxer, when you're a fighter, when you're, you know, under those lights and you're getting, you know, this publicity, people yep. naturally look up to you, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and yeah. I think, I think, to be honest, even though you're quite early on in your career and things like that, you know, you're still at that stage where people are looking up to you and things. Mm. I'd like to hear your thoughts on that, about what, what sort of impact um, you feel you've had on, you know, on your local community, on young amateur boxers, on, you know, people mm. looking up to you even if it's on social media or whatever. Do you know what I mean? Because I've, I've seen yeah. you, you have that effect on people, but it's all very well me saying it. But, but what, what do you think of, uh, of, your, of your sort of inspirational uh, quality, yeah. if, if that makes sense, basically, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, you've got you to gotta have time for people, you know? And, um, and uh, you know, when, when people ask you, you know, when you're out and about, ask you questions about uh, boxing and stuff, and uh, so certain amateurs, like young amateurs, will say, oh, I want to come and train with you and stuff. And... Uh, but um yeah man I always always um always got time for people and I always, always speak about it and stuff you know and um yeah just like like I said I'm just like any uh, any normal person really and mm -hmm. um you know in in that sense and um yeah good. yeah good stuff it is it is something I just wanted to cover because it's something that people often overlook but obviously you know boxers are role models to people mm -hmm. uh, yeah, sure. sometimes good ones sometimes not so much mm -hmm. um, but I do think it, it obviously has has an impact on people um, and so yeah I mean what I wanted to sort of cover I, I said there was two questions but I've actually um, I actually thought of something there that, that I should have asked really but I haven't so it's the last one it is obviously yep. you know if you had to give advice to, to young um, you know young boxers you know young amateurs or whatever or, or people you know, just just getting started or whatever, things like that. You know, um, I mean, what would you sort of say if you had, if you had like a sort of even if you think back to like the fourteen year old you type of thing, mm. you know, when you were first getting into it type of thing. Yeah. You know, someone like that, or, or maybe somebody who's just turning pro. You know, anything like that. But they're yeah. early on. What, what what would you sort of say is like essential for them to uh, succeed in the game? You know, do well in the game. Um, I'd say you know, um, set you know, set goals. And um, you know, and um, just um, tick off each goal, you know. So once you get it, uh, set another goal. So you don't want to um, look too far ahead. You want to just want to take one step at a time, you know. So obviously, when you when you look too far ahead, you get sidetracked. I'd say, yeah. and like, like like my dad always said to me, you know, and um, and just and take one step at a time. Yeah. And uh, don't don't feel pressured because this guy is doing it this little bit more or. You know, it just you, it just comes in. You know, you just gotta uh, trust the uh, the process. You know, yeah. If it takes you a little bit longer than other people's, then it, that's just how it is. It's good advice. That is good, really good advice, champ. You know, um, it's one of those things. I really like that actually because I tell you what, there, there's so much comparison that goes on yeah. in the it world. Is, it is. Um, Particularly, I think I do think social media obviously has a has a big hand in it. You know, because people yeah, only it definitely does. Back. I mean, people don't usually post up when they're having like a shit day or whatever, mm -hmm. um, and and things like that. So it is, um, it is, it is good. So, Champ, it's been fantastic, you know, and I really appreciate you being so open about everything and sharing so much, uh, so much cool stuff with us. So, like I say, thank you very much for your time. Thanks a lot, mate. Yeah, it's been uh, it's been a pleasure, mate. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much for watching. Um, please subscribe to the Simply Inspired YouTube channel, and there'll be more videos coming soon.